Hey everyone. If you have a Goal Zero Yeti, you've seen those 22 volt maximum solar panel stickers all over the thing. And today we're going to plug in some higher voltage panels and see if we blow some stuff up. So, like I said, if you have a Goal Zero Yeti, you see these stickers. There's one right on the front panel by the PWM input. If you flip open the cover, it also says 14 to 22 volts. And there's even another sticker that says, do not exceed 22 volts input. And if you have the MPPT module, if you take a look at that, there is also a really clear sticker that says, do not exceed 22 volts under standard use. So, could be argued that goal zero is being extremely clear that 22 volts is the max. And you know, I never really doubted it. It says it right there. It says it in the manual. It says it in the specs. But then recently I got a comment and this person named left of one had spoken to goal zero technical support. And according to technical support, the MPPT module can handle up to 48 volt panels. So the internal PWM is limited to 22 volts, but the MPPT can handle much, much more, up to 48 volts. And he reached out and they responded and said the reason why they did this is to avoid confusion. They didn't want somebody accidentally plugging in a 48 volt panel into the PWM inputs because that would actually break the unit. So they decided to basically not tell us that the MPPT module has this capability to avoid people doing dumb things. So I decided to put this to the test. I actually have quite a few panels lying around that are not okay to use with the Yeti straight up. So this is a TP solar panel that I have that's 19 volts, but now they've started making one that looks the same, but outputs at 25 volts. And so this kind of panel I could never normally use, but I like to keep it around for testing purposes. And so first things first, I wanted to actually confirm that it is high voltage. And yes, it is putting out about 23 and a half volts at open circuit. So it is doing what it says it will do. And TP Solar includes this step down module. And the idea with this is it takes your output from your solar panel and it reduces the voltage down to 19 volts. So that way it works like the older generation of these panels. And essentially you just plug it into the output from the solar panel and then you just connect a cable up to the other end of it and then you're good to go. And at 19 volts, this is perfectly safe to plug into any port on your Goal Zero Yeti. And I wanted to first of all check and make sure that's really working. And yes, it is putting out pretty much 19 volts even. So the converter does work well. And if you plug it into the PWM, everything seems perfectly fine. So good news there, uh, but there is a downside. So this converter, unfortunately, can only handle three amps. So the most you're ever going to get out of this converter is about 60 watts. And 60 watts really isn't that great considering that they're putting this with 100 watt and 120 watt panels. So you're basically not using the full capacity here. So. That's why this MPPT thing is really interesting to me. I wanted to see if I could actually just plug this high voltage panel directly into the MPPT input and see if it would work. Um, that way we eliminate the conversion losses and the limitations of that box. So all I have to do here is just remove the box. So just unplug it completely from the solar panel and then we'll just directly plug the cable from the solar panel into the MPPT port. Now this is kind of scary. I just am doing something some guy on the internet told me to do. And clearly this could void your warranty. So do it at your own risk. And the results are, well, it's working. It's that easy. So plugged it in, no problems at all. I left it plugged in for quite a while and it just seemed to work. Now, I will note that it is a terrible day, as always, to test solar panels, so that's why I'm only getting 20 or watts or so. Uh, but clearly, with the MPPT input, 
yeah, you can plug a higher voltage panel. So these 25 volts are no problem at all. But, you know, you should be careful when you do things like this. So I think it's only wise to do some more testing. So yes, this TP Solar 25 volt panel works, uh, but maybe other kinds won't. So luckily I've got some other kinds to test. So this is a more classic flexible solar panel by TP Solar. This is a 50 watt model and this has MC4 connectors on it. So it's kind of a more typical style solar panel that you might be using. And so let's go ahead and test this one too. Now in terms of voltage, this thing is rated at 28 volts open circuit. So busting out the old multimeter, I was measuring 27.6 volts, so right on the money. And like I said, this uses MC4 connectors. Uh, luckily I have this converter that goes from MC4 to eight millimeters. So all I have to do is just snap the MC4 connectors in, which is always easier said than done. And then we will be ready to plug this into the Yeti and do some testing. All right, so moment of truth. Eh, look at that, we're getting power. Again, I have to remind you, I am testing this on pretty much the worst possible day. So five watts from a 50 watt panel is not good, but neither are the conditions. So just bear with me. Uh, when I did get a break, I was getting closer to 18 watts, so it's better there. Um, but no problems, no smoking, no issues at all. So with two successful tests under my belt, I was thinking about how to test even higher voltages. And if you hook two solar panels together in series, that doubles the voltage. So I have two identical 50 watt panels here. I'm connecting the two inner positive and negatives together, and then the outer ones are connected in series. So if I put that in my multimeter, that's 55 volts, which is clearly way too high. That won't work but I have a Rock Pals, and this is a 50 watt panel that is rated at 19 volts and it has MC4 connectors. So my plan is to take these panels and hook them together, one Rock Pals and one TP Solar. And I think together we should be just about right. So looking in the Rock Pals manual, I just wanted to confirm all this. Yes, it is rated at 19 volts. So we've got 19 volts on this one, and then we'd be adding it to about 28 volts on the other one. So again, just hooking these together in series, uh, really easy to do with MC4s, very difficult to do with your typical eight millimeter connector. All right, so let's see where we are at. So 49.8. Now you remember, according to goal zero, 48 volts is the limit. So we're a wee bit over on open circuit. However, when you hook it up, it will be a little bit lower. So I'm willing to take the chance. And here we go, folks. It's the moment of truth. Is this going to cause my Yeti to completely blow up? Ah! Nah, just kidding. It really wasn't a big deal. I plugged it in. Remember, we're about a volt and a half over what it's rated for. And look at that. It's working just fine. It's no problem. I don't know why you're all so worried about it. Uh, maybe I'm overlooking something though. So let me know in the comments just how stupid I am. I'm sure you will anyway, but I'm doing this for you. Uh, when the sun did come out, I was getting about 40 watts, which again, isn't great, but it works. So yeah, if you have an old Yeti that you think is limited to 22 volts and you have the MPPT module installed, congratulations. You can now hook a higher voltage panel in. So I am very excited about this development. Uh, I want to thank the folks in the comments section for tipping me off to this. Uh, I actually emailed Goal Zero twice. They never responded to my emails and I could never get chat working. So, hey, I just figured I'd have to test it. And so I hope you found this useful. And what I would suggest doing is being careful. So what I did is I have now a big piece of painter's tape that says high voltage. And when I'm messing around with panels that will blow up my PWM, I just stick it right over those inputs. So it makes it impossible for me to do the dumb thing. 
And so that way I can safely plug in my high voltage panels and know I'm not going to make a mistake. And when I'm done with it, I just put it inside the lid so I can reuse it next time. So if you found this video useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I did endanger my Yeti so that you can learn something. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.